Sarnis is honored to present uh, another uh, Stephen Hawking Medal for Science Communication to Jane uh, Goodall. For many years, Jane Goodall has been a strong advocate for improving the welfare and knowledge of chimpanzees, primates, and animals in general. I guess all of you know Jane. Jane is an international uh, renowned primatologist and anthropologist who was born in London in 1934. She's the world's foremost expert on chimpanzees, having been the first person to observe chimpanzees creating and using tools, a trait that, at the time, was considered typically human. Uh, ethologist and conservationist, Jane redefined what it means to be human and set the standard for conducting studies on behaviors through her work with wild chimpanzees in Gombe Spring National Park in Tanzania. Our observations have profoundly changed the way we understand animal intelligence and enriched our understanding of humanity. Uh, Jen could not be with us today to accept the award, but she sent us a video. So let's have a round of applause before Jen's video begins. First of all, let me say what an honour it is to receive this prestigious award. And let me thank the Stormers Festival Advisory Board for voting that I should be thus honoured. When I realised I was being awarded for science communication, it made me think about how it all began. Even as a child, I knew I wanted to write books about animals to share what I'd learned. When I got the chance to study wild chimpanzees, I was supported by the National Geographic Society and wrote articles for their readers. I had no university degree when I began my study. My mentor, paleontologist <coughs> Dr. Louis Leakey, wanted someone with an unbiased mind. And I found out what he meant when, after I'd been in the field for about two years, he eventually got me a place in Cambridge University to do a PhD in ethology. He wanted other scientists to take me seriously. Anyway, when I got there, the ethology professors told me I couldn't talk about animals having personalities, minds and emotions, as these were unique, unique to humans. Nor should I have feelings of empathy for my subjects, who should have been numbered, not named. Of course, I was unable to accept this. I'd learned from my childhood teacher, my dog Rusty, that in this respect, these erudite professors were wrong. I managed to get my PhD despite writing about my named chimpanzees with their personalities, intelligence and emotions. And today it's widely accepted that just as Darwin believed some 150 years ago, we humans are not separated from other animals by an unbridgeable chasm. We're not the only sentient beings on the planet capable of knowing happiness, frustration, anger, fear, and so on, and feeling pain. From the beginning, I vowed I wouldn't succumb to scientific jargon. For example, even in my thesis and in the scientific articles I published, I wrote that an excited chimpanzee showed hair erection rather than pilo erection. And I talked about self-grooming rather than auto-grooming. When I got the proofs back from an article I did for Nature, Everywhere I'd written he or she, this had been scratched out and replaced with it. I scratched out the its and underlined the he's and she's, and the editor capitu capitulated. I also decided that even when I was writing for a scientific audience, I wouldn't write anything that couldn't be understood by an intelligent 14-year-old. Of course, Communicating scientific information requires spoken lecture, not only writing. I was really nervous when I was asked to give a lecture to a scientific audience for the first time. But I vowed I would never read a speech 
and I would do my best not to say um and uh. Not until five minutes into that lecture did I realize, gosh, I've been given and blessed not only with a gift for writing, but for speaking as well. And so looking back, I see that from the very beginning, I was determined to make my scientific findings available to the general public. I'm really terribly sorry that I can't be with you in Yerevan to receive this award in person, partly because I would love to be able to thank Dr. Israelian and board members, especially Brian May, in person, but also because I've never been to Ar Armenia and I would so appreciate an opportunity to speak with the schools, university and citizens of Armenia. It's become increasingly obvious that we're going through dark times, not just politically and socially, but environmentally. Indeed, many scientists fear it's too late to save our planet and ourselves from the effects of climate change and loss of biodiversity. But I believe we have a window of time during which we can make progress in healing some of the harm we've inflicted and at least slow down the warming of the globe. But that window is closing so that to make a difference, we must get together and take action now before it is too late. More and more people are losing hope. They feel helpless, sink into apathy and so do nothing. And if we all lose hope, especially our young people, we're doomed. Perhaps at some future time, there'll be an opportunity for me to share my reasons for hope with people in Armenia. But for now, let me once again thank you for honoring me with this award. I'm honored and thank you.